Hi, welcome to American Golf. Today we are joined with no other than Darren Clark, Open Champion, who's going to join us on this Master Series as we discuss a little bit about how important a warm-up is before you get out on that course. So let's head out to the range. We'll have a look at the short game area as well. A little bit of putting tips from you. Also, we can discuss your CBD oil range. Yep, see how that help. Oh, absolutely. See how that can improve all parts of your game. So we're here at uh, the range at Creef Golf Club. Um, can you talk us a little bit how important you feel a good warm-up is before the round? Well, everybody needs to, no matter how fit or athletic you are, everybody needs to loosen up and, and, and hit a couple of balls and, and go through a process of, of getting ready to go out there and play. The best in the world do it, so everybody should really do it. And um, first thing I'll do, I, I try to go putting green, chipping green, driving range. That's the order in which I do it because I want to go to the putting green first, get a little bit of a feel going in my hands for just knocking in some putts. Then go to the chipping green and get some feel for the, the speed of the green to, to, to hit some different shots around the green. And then after that, I'll go to the driving range. Then I feel as if I'm ready to go play. If they are out on the range and they've got that extra time, what, what would you advise them for that amateur golfer? Obviously, they're not going to spend maybe an hour out there, maybe like the pros would do. Would you suggest them just hitting a couple of drivers first and yeah, then going you know, to an iron? No, or? start off with the wedges always first. The wedges. I'm, I'm always the short stuff and then build up to the big stuff. And if anything, work on a little bit of rhythm. You know, that's, that's, that would be a big key because you see a lot of amateurs, whatever flaws they have, pros have flaws as well, but you see most of them, they try to hit it too hard. You, they, they, they see the pros on TV or they see their buddies hit it so far, they're jumping all over it. So, you know, a really good drill is, is going one, two, three. So one at the start, two at the top of your backswing, and three at an impact. And if you can get that timing going, then usually you'll have pretty good rhythm and that'll help your ball striking. So the ball should go straighter and then hopefully you may hit one or two more greens. And if you don't, then the work that you will have done on the putting green chipping green will stand you in good stead. Darren, we're down here on the putting green, mm -hmm. where everything's won. Yes, <laughs> yeah it is. Talk me through some of the drills, some of the most important things that you do here. Are we focusing on speed of the greens or are we just trying to get the read right or tell me always speed because you read you can't have a read unless you have speed so um you know agreed that green that's running at say what we play on tour between 12 and 13 is totally different to read than that's on a on a green that's running at 10. so the first thing that i normally do when i come on to a putting green is i'll hit some three footers try and um, sort of judge the the speed see if my strokes okay knock them knocking them in and then i'll probably go to about 40 foot and hit some longer ones because three footers and 40 footers, you're not going to hold them. Um, the reason why you do it is, I see so many people practicing um, 15, 20 footers. Why would you, you practice putts that statistically you're going to hold one in five, one in, that's some of the best putters in the world. It doesn't make sense. So you practice three foot and 40 foot. Well, a little bit. You don't want to practice missing, do you? You don't, you don't go to the range to practice mistakes. You go to get a little bit better. So, you know, speed's everything. And if you can get your speed, you get your like, work on, I work on my stroke and mechanics a little bit from the three footers and then from the 40 footers there's more speed, try and get my speed dialed in and if I get those both things then hopefully a bad putt will get the 40 footers to within the three foot which I've already practiced. So it's, a, it's the pair of them work together. So Darren, a bit of short game practice now. If you're anything like me, this is something that I dread. I'm here chunking my wedges. I never know whether to throw them up high, yeah. chip and run. I never know the right shot. So what, what should we be doing? What, what should we practice? Well, there's a couple of, couple of things for, for a start that most amateurs do, which is very different to what the professionals do. Um, a lot of amateurs try and chip with too much loft for a start. You know, they see the pros out in tour and they've got those low wedges and it's going in there low check and spinning. It looks great on TV. Yeah. Not always a shot to be played, you know, you've got to go through and find out which shot you're most comfortable with, you know. For me, I like, um, if I can, getting the ball on the green as soon as I can and getting the releasing up there when I'm playing. Ta takes, takes all the spin um, out of the equations because you nip one, it checks a lot, you don't quite get it, it checks too much. Sometimes, yes, you've got to play one that's going to spin. But there's a couple of basics to it, you know, a lot of amateurs, as they do in their main swing, they tend to scoop the ball up all the time. If you watch all the pros, you'll see the pros that we're hitting down on the golf ball. Bad chipping is from a club head that's rising going through the, the ball. 
good chipping is from a club head that's going from, as a descending blow into the golf ball. So a lot of amateurs are afraid, are afraid to have interaction with the ground because they think they're going to chunk it, they're going to do whatever. But you stabilize that by turning. How many times do you see somebody taking a chip but this shoulder goes up, their body stops. So the only thing that can happen is their hands take over. Your hands take over, then you're going to hit skulls, you're going to hit it heavy, you're going to hit it, you're going to hit it thin. You watch all the pros, it's, there's still a, there has to be a body motion. There has to be a little bit of a turn. That's what stabilizes the club. That's how you can keep your hands slightly ahead of the, the club face if you want to, and then you don't need to do any of this. Okay, great. So your, your choice is really to get that ball onto the ground and rolling percentages, up to the pin. Percentages, okay. percentages, percentages, all the time. Spin is, spin is great, and sometimes, as I said, we do use it. But you want to get, try and get that ball you know, the difference between getting it to four feet and getting it to eight feet for us on tour, your percentage wide of hole and putts doubles more than more than doubles you get at the four feet. Um, but you know, most amateurs should be, they get nervous over it, they think too much about it because it's basically poorest technique. You need weight on your left side, you need to hit down on the golf ball and use a little bit less loft and get that ball running up to the hole like a putt does. You know, rhythm can help a lot of things. So I've always found for me that I try, yes, I'll hammer it now and again whenever I really want to, but most of the time I'm just trying to feel that you've got to turn it. I feel as if you have to turn on to it. You know, you watch all those pros playing at the Open, um, Cam Smith, Rory, um, Cameron Young, all the guys, you see them all turn through it. A lot of amateurs, you see finishing going this way because they never actually get their chest through it. So if I'm hitting a um, little low one here, You'll see how much my my body actually gets right through the um, right through it whenever I'm hitting that low drive. So it's just a little one, just a two-yard little fade, but the ball's gone out this height, and my body's come turned completely all the way through. So I'm not trying to help. I'm not trying to do anything with it. So Darren, mm -hmm. we're on the 18th. We're going to talk about your. CBD oil mm -hmm. range. Mm -hmm. um, start off just just quickly. When, when would you suggest them sort of taking the, the oil? Before well, the, the oil round? the oil is probably about an hour before you go out and play. You know, I try to take it first thing in the morning. I've got a little bit of a habit, you know, that it's um, like brushing my teeth. Take a little bit of this and um, go out and, and take it. Obviously, an hour at least an hour before you play. And then you've got the gummies there in your hand. That, yeah, sure. You know, if you're getting a little bit um, stressed or you're a little bit, you've just made a silly double from nowhere or whatever, then you know. You've Sometimes. got them to just calm the nerve. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, exactly. okay. Well, I mean, I've got here, you've given me some data here mm -hmm. that's been given from ShotScope. Yeah. Um, with 100 golfers yeah. over eight weeks, I believe that yeah. was right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and on average, testers improved their scoring by over one shot yeah. around. I mean, that's... Well, well, it's huge. It's it's huge. You know, the benefits, the, the benefits of it are that um, it helps with any injuries you have. It helps you sleep better. It helps you deal with a little bit of stress and anxiety a, a little bit better. There's so many benefits of it that it's no wonder that it ha helps people of course, score yeah. a little bit. If you're a little bit more relaxed in the golf course, chances are you're going to play a little bit better. Yeah, fabulous. I mean, another one here I've seen here. This is this is yeah. crazy. I mean, I'd love this number of three putts reduced mm -hmm. from once every 14.8 yeah. holes. Yeah, exactly. To once every 19.2 holes. I know, I, mean. I know. I think I need to take more myself. <laughs> 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 but yes, you know that goes back to the same sort of thing. It it, it helps your 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 mental sharpness your mental awareness and if you're a little bit more relaxed then you know you're pr prone to to just let it go a little bit more and release and have a better rhythm again rhythm comes back to rhythm and all that sort of stuff if yeah. you're sore if you're stiff all that stuff that this helps um, make better um, helps you play better sure I mean I think you know with the golfers and the grip it and rip mm -hmm. it thing mm -hmm. that, that's out there that uh -huh. if you hold the club too tight you yeah. lose your oh, yardage yeah. as well so i yeah, mean exactly. the fact on this driving distance increased by two percent which is an mm -hmm. extra five yards yeah yeah who, it's doesn't, a lot. who doesn't want five yards I out know. There, you know well there's a reason why i take it you know the benefits are, are there they're they've been proven um, statistically and, and, and it really helps thanks for joining us today on our master series with darren clark here at creef golf club make sure you follow subscribe to all of our channels for more hints and tips from more tour players in the future